This is the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast, presented by HoosierIllustrated.com. I'm joined by Kyler Staley, Andrew Rosenberg, just us today. It's been quite a, I mean, it's been a little bit last time we recorded the show to announce uh, Mike Woodson returning 2024, 2025. Since then, Indiana wrapped up their season. Uh, they won the first round of the Big Ten tournament, taking down Penn State, and then got, let's call it how it is, they got blown out by Nebraska. Kaisei Tominaga did what he had done to the Hoosiers all year, torched them, but now it's time, I guess, there's still March Madness, there's still college basketball. We might dive into that a little bit, but we're going to talk about some Hoosiers offseason, uh, what's kind of been going on there. Kyler, how are you? Good, man. It has been a while. I want to say it's close to three weeks or so, three or four weeks, really, since we did record. Um, yeah, lots, a lot's happened. Obviously, you mentioned it. The season ended for Indiana um, in a really tough fashion. Um, but the good news is uh, Mike Woodson, Indiana, they have been hot in the transfer portal. They have been spreading their eggs in, um, across multiple baskets. Um, they are just, you know, attacking this thing right now. No commitments right now. But uh, we'll uh, we'll see about it. But uh, yeah, it's been a while. Apologies to everybody that was you know waiting for that next uh, talking about the Hoosiers podcast episode to drop. But things get busy. Drew went on spring break. He uh, hung out with a monkey. So um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to clarify, yeah, they had a, had a monkey on the beach that uh, took a picture with. You can probably see it on my Instagram. But should <laughs> clarify that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so but no, we got a lot to talk about today. We'll uh, we'll uh, you know, talk about the season, kind of recap it a little bit, talk about the transfer portal right now. A um, couple guys, you know, that opted to transfer, and then a couple other roster news and stuff, and then uh, we'll talk about kind of what's ahead uh, moving forward at the end here. But Drew, you're the host. I'll let you uh, go ahead and get started. Yeah, I guess we got. I should address the elephant in the room. One hour, less than an hour after we posted, recorded the last podcast. Liam McNeely decommitted from Indiana. Yep. We've kind of given our reactions since on, I mean, writing on the site. So not going to dive into that too much. Seems like Bill Self and a couple other coaches were kind of tampering a little bit the entire time. And when uh, the offense didn't get better, McNeely decided uh, he wanted to go somewhere else. So currently Indiana does not have a recruiting class for 2024. There is, uh, I believe, um, I want to get his name right, Diamant Blasi, a former G League Ignite player who, or not former, I guess, because the G League Ignite now shut down, was committed there and now looking at his college option. I believe, according to Jeff Rabjohns, he's on campus right now visiting, if I'm not mistaken, Kyler. Yeah, no, he he visits uh, tomorrow. Um, okay. Indiana does have a couple of visits coming up as well. Bryson Tiller is one of them. I, I, he uh, he was reported also from Jeff as well. Um he uh he's visiting so he's also a possible reclass candidate he's been like that forever um not forever but like for the past few years um he uh he's just kind of been there it always felt like g G league ignite was kind of the route to go there but they obviously shut that down so his college options became more realistic there so um then that then plus you know you, you got a bunch of transfer portal guys that are coming to visit as well um so but we'll have all that information on the website once we all get confirmation on that yeah, so I guess we should dive into the roster. I mean, there's not – I don't know what else we can say about the season that we haven't already said. It was very clearly a pretty big failure in year three for Mike Woodson. Just not what he wanted. Injuries really plagued the team, but just also play style was not what I guess fans were hoping for and the lack of guard depth, which leads to the next topic. I mean, with – you look at the Indiana basketball roster – We'll start with the guys who have already announced they're coming back. Malik Renew, Trey Galloway, Anthony Leal, Gabe Cups. I mean, he's going to be there unless otherwise announced. CJ Gunn, Caleb Banks entered the portal. Peyton Sparks has already transferred back to Ball State. A lot of roster turnover. Um, Mackenzie Mbako is still waiting on that decision. And then you have Khalil Ware. It was announced today, actually, that he would be entering the NBA draft. Really no surprise there, Kyler. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, a lot, lot to break down with this roster. One, um, you look at the guys that graduated. You got Xavier Johnson, Anthony Walker. They're obviously gone. And then the transfer portal guys, CJ Gunn, Caleb Banks, and Peyton Sparks all opted to leave. And then you've got Khalil Ware, who opted to go to the NBA draft. 
a lot of open spots there, a lot of open scholarships. I think when you do the math there, I think it's around seven. I, I think it's seven is the number. Um, obviously, Indiana still had that open scholarship that they never used last year as well. Um, so you got seven spots there. So that's a lot of guys to fill. But that's not really uncommon in this kind of era of basketball, college basketball. I think from year in and year out, it's going to be hard to really, you know, keep guys unless you can really sell, um, you know, the whole vision and everything that you're going to keep most of your players. But um, it, it's a lot of spots to fill. But then you also look at the group that's coming back. Malik Renu, Trey Galloway, Gabe Cubs, Anthony Leal, um, those guys right there, even if Indiana – doesn't get Mackenzie and Baco back, which, um, I mean, that's still on the table. You don't know what's going to happen with him right now. Um, a lot of question marks around him, what he's going to do. Um, even if you have those four back, you do have an extra spot that you got to fill, but you also have a pretty solid core, I think, in a lot of ways um, that you can build around. Obviously, you've got Malik Renew, who's probably going to be your main guy next year, yeah. um, regar- regardless of whoever they get in the transfer portal. Um even with McKenzie and Baco potentially coming back, Malik Renew is going to be the guy, and that's who you build your team around, especially if you want to play that inside-out kind of game. Um, Malik Renew is that guy. Then you got experience coming back in Anthony Leal, Trey Galloway. Those guys have been around the block for five years now. Um, they know what to expect. They know what Michael Woodson wants. And then you've got an exciting prospect, and I would still call him a prospect with Gabe Cups. Um, he showed some good flashes this year, a little timid at times. Um, you know, was thrown into the fire right away with Xavier Johnson going down multiple times this season, um, which I think in the long run, that's going to give him so much experience, you know, moving forward and uh, and everything. But you've got him, um, and there's a guy that showed a lot of promise. Um, there's a lot of potential there as well. So you've got a good core coming back right now. Now it's all about filling the, you know, the pieces, you know, plugging in the guys that you need, the, you know, the key areas of the floor that you need. You need shooting. You need a bunch of guards. Um, and you need, honestly, I don't think any fans want me to say this, but you need front court players right now. And that's exactly what they need. They need rim protectors. They need somebody that's going to replace Kolo Ware. Not saying that's going to start next to Malik Renew, because I think everybody's kind of over that kind of too big lineup down there. Um, but you need somebody that you can trust to protect the rim. Malik Renew is not that guy right now. Um, you know, the foul trouble, the, the way he guards, he uses his hands quite a bit. Um you need some front court players. You need wings. You need guards. You pretty much need everything on the floor. Um, but you got a good group coming back. You've got a good group of recruiters as well um, with those guys. Those guys can really sell what Mike Woodson's kind of approaching, what his vision is for this Indiana program. So a lot to fill, but it's not time to panic yet because we're still really, really early in the transfer portal season. Yeah, you mentioned replacing Khalil where I think another part of his game that kind of going underlooked is – a lob finisher. You look, we had Trace Jackson Davis, Race Thompson two years ago. Khalil Ware took that role and really excelled in there, especially the pick and roll. Mike Woodson, his offense, when it's at its best, having a lob finisher is big. And it's not that Malik Renew can't be that. It's just the athleticism really isn't there with the combination of, I guess, lack of size for if he's more of a four than five, where it's like you really not he's not that guy that's gonna go up and finish over defenders like a Cleo Warewood, a Trey Jackson Davis would. So filling that role is gonna be really big in the offense. But you mentioned it, guards. Shooting in guards. Indiana needs a score a guard who can score the basketball. I you watch this team all year. There was really you could tell when teams struggle on offense, they look to a guard who can or a player who can put the ball on the floor and make the shot make a shot, create a shot, and Indiana just didn't have that all year. They need a guy like that, and it's – you missed out on a Caleb Love, like a guy who could have been that. Like, there's a lot of guys they missed out on, Adult Connect, another one. Indiana needed that all season, and it was, in my opinion, the biggest hole in the roster. You can mention shooting, but I think if they had a guard who could hit shots and, or create shots, I guess, at a high level for themselves and others, it could have hit a lot of the holes in this roster. Yeah, it could have. And then, you know, a guy that could have been that was Xavier Johnson, but with health and just everything like that. Now, he's not going to be your knockdown shooter that you needed. There was just no – other than McKenzie and Baco, there really was no shooting on this team yeah. at all. So, Xavier Johnson wouldn't have even been that. But he would have been a good facilitator, a healthy Xavier Johnson all year. He would have been able to create shots for others just with his speed and the way he, uh, way he works on the ball. Um, but you mentioned a really good point. You need a lot finisher as well. Like, not to say you're going to go out and get a Khalil Ware or a Trace Jackson Davis, because right now there's not really a whole lot of those guys out there um, in the portal 
as of yet. So, but that would be one guy that that'd be one spot that you kind of really need to fill because Malik Renew is not that guy. I would like to see him become that guy. I want to see what he can do in a pick and roll type of situation because I think most of Malik's game right now is just to set up in the post, um, let the defense come to him and see what uh, see what he can do with that. But you need something like that. And honestly, I feel like Mike Woodson's offense and Indiana's offense is at its best when they utilize the pick and roll. What's crazy about the pick and roll game is nobody's ever figured out a way to guard that. Um, still to this day in all these years of basketball, no one's ever figured out a way to guard that. And when they do that, and they did it a little bit more at the end of the season, I thought, um, especially with the connection that Trey Galloway and Ware had, I, I thought those chem- their chemistry just built up, built up. And um, Trey Galloway, credit to him, stepped into a role that um, – that he really is not comfortable with all that all that much. Um, really had to become that point guard, that facilitator. Um, when he's much better, you know, kind of as that hybrid guard, you know, coming off the ball where he can handle the ball a little bit at times. But he built a really good connection in the pick and roll game and the lob connection with that he had with Ware. And I think you need that. And I think that's one of the things that I'm not going to speak for Trey Galloway, but I feel like that's maybe going to be one of the things that he's kind of talking to the coaching staff. Is like, hey, if I'm going to be on the ball um, a little bit more next year. I was like, I'd like to have another lob threat like that. But that is one area that you need to fill along with a lot of the other front court pieces that you need. But you said it, shooting guards, guards, guards. They need guards. They need a, you know, really deep guard rotation, a really yeah. deep, uh, not really deep shooting rotation because you're going to hopefully have McKenzie and Baco back. Hopefully he comes back. But you need about two or three more guys that can really just shoot the ball and just that you can trust to go get a bucket. So, it sounds like a lot when you really think about it, but um, Indiana, I mean, Indiana's got all the minutes to spare, really. They really can sell a lot of it, you know, with the NIL and all that stuff, the minutes that they're going to play. They can really sell that to a lot of these transfers um, out there. But like I said, not time to panic yet, but uh, you kind of know what you need right now, which is a really, really good thing. Yeah, but I mean, let's call it how it is. It is a lot. Indiana does need yep. a lot. There's a lot of roster turnover. You look at the like, the rotation, only, f- I guess, four ro- th- as of now, three rotation players coming back with Galloway, Leal, and um, I guess Cups included, but yep. it's hard. To, I like don't I don't want to like discredit Gabe Cups, but at the same time, Gabe Cups should not have been a like, rotation player to high major as a freshman. Yep. He's a I think Gabe, I have a lot of belief in Gabe Cups. I think he's going to be an exceptional player down the road. But at the same time, you can I can believe that, but also think he should not have been playing the minutes he was at Indiana. Where Indi- And that was the big miss. Indiana left that roster spot open and didn't go get another guard. Yeah, they, they should have got somebody, not to get you off, Drew, but they should have got a, another experienced guy. It doesn't matter if he was coming from low D1, mid-major, whatever. They should have just gotten an experienced guard. Yeah. Somewhere right there that we were like, man, if if all hell breaks loose, if Xavier Johnson gets hurt, we need, a, we need an experienced guard. And they put all their eggs pretty much in the Trey Galloway basket, and they probably shouldn't have done that yeah. um, because then you threw a lot of, at him, a lot of pressure on him. When he was one trying to become a leader, a more vocal leader, which that's just not really what he's been, um, plus, you know, he's got to handle all the ball handling duties. And then um, you get it into like a poor freshman like Gabe Cups, who doesn't really understand, you know, you're playing high level basketball at Indiana um, yeah. in the Big Ten. So that's a lot of pressure for him as well. But you talked about the guard rotation next year and stuff. Here's another name that we probably should mention, Ja'Kai Newton as yeah. well. So we really don't know what he's going to be about next year, but there's a lot of hope with him, especially if he's going to be healthy. Um a lot of stuff that he can do on the floor that he maybe would have helped Indiana with a lot. He's a very athletic player, very tough nosed player. He can actually shoot the ball quite well from what we've seen in high school level. Um, There's a lot of stuff that he can do. Defense is a big one for him as well. So a lot of explosiveness. So expect him, you know, next year, he's probably going to crack the rotation and stuff, but he's also going to be another freshman as well. So you kind of got to wait and see what you have with him. But the, the guard group is okay right now, but, Obviously, you need a lot more than just what they have coming back. Yeah, I want to mention, like, looking in the, uh, looking at the roster from last year, the truth is Indiana only had three, I guess, three natural point guards or ball handlers on the roster. Trey Galloway turned himself into a very good playmaker towards the end of the season. But when Trey Galloway came to Indiana, he was a wing. He was not a point guard. He wasn't someone that was handling the ball as much as he had this season. And you really had Gabe Cups, Xavier Johnson, Ja'Kai Newton as the only true ball handlers on the roster. And you're relying a lot on Galloway. Then Johnson goes down, Newton's out for the year, he redshirts. 
and now that you only have two ball handlers pretty much most of the season, and the offense was so stagnant, and that's a big reason why Indiana needs ball handlers. C.J. Gunn was a someone who we both had a lot of belief in. He didn't pan out to what we thought he could have been, but he, again, not a ball handler. It's just one of those things. Woodson needs ball handlers more than anything in this, I guess, offseason transfer portal. Yeah, and obviously we're, we're sticking quite a bit with the ball handlers, but, I mean, that's the most important part for Indiana this offseason, the most important thing for Indiana. Um, basically what Indiana needs is they need a Jalen Hushafino. Now, that's a lot to ask for, but you need a player like that. You need a guy that you can trust to be a ball handler, and he can also go get his own bucket, you know, can work off a screen, can get that mid-range game going on, can attack the basket. Um that would have been somebody that – it would have been nice to see a healthy Xavier Johnson because I felt like he could have done that in a way. But you need a Jalen Hutchifino. That's what you need. You need an alpha out there. That's that's exactly what you need. Trey Galloway, he's a tough player, very, very tough player. But I don't think he's that, got that alpha mentality, at least not consistently. We saw it a bunch of times this season. Kansas um, was one of those games and everything like that. But um, – you need an alpha guard. You need a guy that you're like, you know, this is my court. This is my ball. I'm going to go get a bucket if my team really needs me. And that's exactly what Indiana needs. And luckily, there's been a lot of transfer portal guys that they have reached out to so far um, that have entered the portal. There are a bunch of guys out there that are like that. So that's a good thing. And, you know, hopefully Indiana can land one or two of them. Yeah. And just to add to that point, I mean, we will, like, the fans, Indiana, they want to, you want to win in March. It's all about March. This program has not had much March. Since- March success since Bob Knight left the program, one Final Four, and that was two years after having been to the Final Four since. And just looking at the top six, this uh, last 16, the Sweet 16, you look at the teams, elite guard play on almost everyone. There are some exceptions, but you look at UConn, great guards, Houston, Jamal Shedd, uh, Marquette, Tyler Kolick, Illinois, Shannon, North Carolina, RJ Davis, Tennessee, Zakai Ziegler. Uh, don't connect Duke, Jared McCain, Roach, bunch of other guards. Uh, it's just one of those things that you need ball handlers. You need a good point guard. You need good guards because guard play takes you in March. And that's what you're relying when the game, when you get to the end of games. Yep. And uh, my last thing I'm going to say is guards win in March. That's exactly what happens. You got to have guards. Um, you got to have a well-balanced team. It's fine if Mike Woodson wants to play the inside out game, but at the same time, if that's going to work, you got to have guards. Um, it worked last year uh, or two years ago now, I guess. It worked two years ago with Tracy Jackson Davis and Jalen Hushafino, that inside out game. Um, but if you're going to do that with Malik, you got to have a good guard with it and you got to have some really good guards and you got to have depth with it. So um, we'll see. But, you know, we'll reach out to, we'll get into these transfer portal guys that they've already reached out to. But, Luckily, they're, they're reaching out to a lot of them. So um, we'll just kind of see what happens. Yeah, we've uh, I guess we've teased it enough, so I think we might as well just jump in. For, I guess, the one thing I'll add before I toss it to you, Kyler, who's your illustrated.com slash Indiana dash basketball dash transfer dash tracker dash who's dash leaving dash who's dash coming dash other dash names dash two dash monitor slash backslash. We'll have the transfer portal, but... If you don't feel like memorizing and writing all that down, just search, go to HoosierOstrade.com, hit the search bar, Indiana Basketball Transfer Tracker, and you'll see every player who's heard from Indiana, those who've left the program, and pretty much everyone who's committed, leaving, where they're going, everything you could need to know about Indiana Basketball's transfer portal, the offseason, it's right there on that, in that little story. So make sure you are checking it out to stay updated. But Kyler, so I guess what I guess what has Indiana been up to uh, since the season ended with the portal? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna give a lot of credit to Mike Woodson and them. You know, there obviously there was a lot of I would say a lot of hate um from the Indiana fans, you know, for a cer- certain portion of that is what they how they attacked um the transfer portal last year. They were putting a lot of eggs and a lot of and just you know, a couple of guys' baskets, you know, it, they weren't really spreading it out a little bit as well, but I felt like Right as soon as the season ended this year, Mike Woodson and staff, they were ready to go. They were ready to start looking at these guys. They've reached out to multiple guys right away, um, and they've just been ready to go. But, you know, you look at our transfer tracker, um, kind of hard to say transfer tracker, but uh, <laughs> um, you look at that, there's a lot of guards there, a lot of guards that they're reaching out. I feel like it's every other day or once a day we're adding a new guard that Indiana's reached out to. 
which is fantastic. It really is for the staff. Um, a lot of guys that they've reached out to were the low major, mid major guys where their seasons kind of came to an end. So there's going to be another wave, you know, once, you know, the sweet 16s this weekend, you got teams whose season's going to end. You're going to get more transfers out of that as well. A lot more of the high majors are starting to trickle in as well right now, but you know, Indiana is reaching to a lot of guys. They're reaching to also to some in-state guys. Leland Walker is one of them um, who played at Eastern Kentucky, um, I think, for two seasons, if I can remember correctly. Um, he's a guy that you look at right now that, that's got potential. Indiana kind of recruited him a little bit, um, a little bit as well when he uh, was in high school um, in the Indianapolis era, area. Um, I'm trying to think of some other guys that they've reached out to. Uh, Trey Dinkins. Is another one that they've reached out to. Um, I think he went to Kinesis. Um, trying to think, there's a lot of a lot of low major guys out there. Um, but the best thing about you know the low major guys um, that they're reaching out to, you know, if you look at the 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 the, uh, the schools that they're look that they're also reaching out to, it's a lot of high level schools as well, um, which is a good thing. I, for me personally, I always look at you know if a player is getting recruited, what schools are kind of looking at him as well, but. Um, a lot of shooters. Devo Davis is another one from Arkansas. Um, didn't have the best of season, but he's in there, you know, an experienced guy. Um, a couple of Mel, um, Belmont guys that have kind of reached out or that Indiana's reached out as well. I think one of the bigger ones that Indiana has reached out to, and this just was uh, reported today, is Kate Tyson from Belmont. Um, a 47% shooter from the three, a big wing, a big guard, a very smart guard. Um, he's been, I think he was all Missouri ba Valley conference this year. Um, second team, all Missouri Valley, mm -hmm. um, just a really, really tough player. He made the all freshman team. He was an all freshman. That would be a guy that Indiana that could come in and just fill a lot of holes for Indiana, especially without yeah. Lane McNeely. Now that would be a guy that could come in. But the good thing is, is that not only is Indiana reaching out to guards, um, they're reaching out to experience guards as well. Um, so they're spreading their eggs, you know, quite a bit as well. So, and I, I think they'll continue to do so. Yeah, I think there was a couple of names, I guess. They're not on the transfer list. Indiana hasn't officially reached out to yet. Also, I wanted to add uh, Tony Perkins, Iowa, Iowa guard, Lawrence North graduate. So Indiana native could, you know, could be someone to monitor. Yep. And then um, – Jalen Blackman, I think you posted about it, younger brother of uh, former IU basketball player James Blackman. And then um, there's one other I'm missing, and I'm uh, blanking on a name, Bloomington South. Um, oh, Connor Bradley. Hickman. Yep, Connor yes. Hickman. They just uh, – yep, they. Uh, I think that they've reached out to him. I think that's been reported, or maybe it's not yet. Um, but he is actually scheduled for a visit as well. So yeah. that's what we're uh, – um, we're getting that reported. There's been multiple reports for that as well. So he will be on campus um, for that. But yeah, it's a it's really nice to see. Honestly, a lot of uh, a lot of the guys that they're reaching out to are local guys as well. You know, you're they're trying to recruit back to state. Mike Woodson's kind of recruiting back to state a little bit. So, um, but you mentioned the guys that uh, Indiana hasn't officially reached out to, but I, you would imagine that they would. Tony Perkins mm -hmm. is a big one right there. That's a big one. Yeah. He's been at Iowa for three years, I think. I think this was his junior season. So um, two or three years, two at the very least. But he's been a great player at Iowa. And he yeah. just got better and better every year. And the times he's played Indiana, he's absolutely torched Indiana. He's kind of that alpha guard that you need. Mm -hmm. um, defense. He can create his own shot. Um, it just has a really good feeling for when it comes to being a floor general. So that would be a guy. Um, who's your guy from Harvard that uh, is kind of on your wish list? Oh yeah, I uh, well, I mean Malik Mack. I, yeah, he's entered the portal. I think every almost every school in the country is kind of look at him. I mean, Indiana fans might remember in Gamebridge, he dropped twenty seven points on the Hoosiers. Really, really good guard, super quick, great jump shot, just good all around feel for the game. I mean, someone who could immediately, I think, make a really big impact at the high major level. And he was a freshman last year. I, was either first or second in the conference in the Ivy League in scoring. Just really good player, and we got to see him firsthand. So, I mean, I'm a yeah. big fan of his game. Yeah, he's real impressive. I mean, another guy like that, um, Jalen Blackman, obviously very, very yeah. familiar with the Indiana program. You, you can almost bet that Indiana is going to reach out to him, and he's going to be arguably one of the um, – behind Mac, he's probably going to be the highest sought-after uh, guard 
Um, just an elite scorer, and he knows what it's like with the, being in the Indiana program. He's from Indianapolis. His older brother, James Blackman Jr., had a great great career at Indiana. Um, I think he was with the Hoosiers for three seasons. But, um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that Indiana hasn't reached out to, but it's like these high-level guys that are really now starting to enter the portal. Um, Tony Parkins, I, I feel like, was a little bit of a shock to me to, to see him because I thought he had a good thing going on with Iowa. But, um, you know, a lot of guys out there that could just fill a lot of roles for Indiana – and just uh, we mentioned it quite a bit, you know, they're spreading their bat, they're spreading their eggs, you know, in multiple guys' baskets. So um, we'll see what they can do. But you know, there's going to be another wave of transfer portals coming up. Sweet 16 teams are going to end. Um, there's going to be another wave. So Indiana's just got to keep being aggressive um, and really attack this thing. You know, it's not even April yet, and I uh, I always said, you know, the biggest month of the season for Indiana is going to be April, um, and it is. So they've gotten a really good start. We didn't even really talk about it, but the best thing that probably could have happened for this Indiana team was turning down the NIT invite um, mm-hmm. just so they could get started on it. And luckily they did because they would be really, really far behind um, if they hadn't. Mm-hmm. So um, credit it's, to Mike Woodson and them for this, and uh, we'll just see what happens. Let's call it how it is, though. And I, I, I mean, I'm a student here. I don't want to see Indiana in the NIT. I don't think anyone does. Indiana does not belong to the NIT in – the fact that people are like, oh, maybe you should. No, this team needed to focus on getting better for next year. The NIT was not going to do anything to help this team, help the program. Building for next year is way more important. And I also want to go back and correct myself. I said Malik Mack was second in the Ivy League. He was actually third. Second was Clark Satcher. It's another guy Indiana basketball reached out to. So Indiana really uh, has a couple of names in the Ivy League pool that they're looking at uh, to add maybe this offseason. So. Yeah, um, and I just kind of got a little bit of breaking news here. Um, Indiana has reached out to Tony Perkins, is officially now. So um, I know our boy Alec right now, who's not with us in the pod, um, he's writing up something on who'srealustrated.com. So that's big right there. So Indiana has officially reached out to Tony Perkins. So that's a guy, you know, they can make a strong play at. Um, kind of rare that you see a uh, in-conference transfer. It's very rare mm-hmm. that you see that, but uh, – that's a lot of gut. That's a that's something that could happen. Very well happen in this kind of circumstance. He checks a lot of boxes of what Indiana needs. Mm-hmm. So um, we'll see about it. But that that's a big one. So expect Indiana to just keep reaching out to more and more players like that. Yeah, just to add to that, Perkins also has heard from Ole Miss, Arizona State, Arkansas, Mizzou, Oklahoma, Nebraska, UCLA, Miami, and BYU. So UCLA, Nebraska, two um, two more Big Ten schools have reached out. Weird to say that UCLA is a Big Ten school, but it's <laughs> it is. I mean, you know, yep. um, I guess in a month from now, it's going to be official. The UCLA, USC, Washington, Oregon are all going to be Big Ten schools, which is still super weird to me. But you know, conference free alignment and the Big Ten is a just a powerhouse. I guess at this point. Yeah, it's a powerhouse. Things are going to be a lot different. Um, yeah. And Mike Woodson and company, and pretty much all the other um, original Big Ten teams. They got to prepare for that. Um, you're getting a new style of play coming into the Big Ten this year. Um, those West Coast teams are going to play differently than what this ground and pound Big Ten style was. And honestly, I felt like this year, um, I don't know about you, Drew, but I feel like the Big Ten style, you know, that they kind of say the ground and pound, they're really banging down low and stuff like that. I feel like it, you know, got a little bit better this year. I felt yeah. like more teams, you know, spread their offense out a little bit more and you saw a little bit more athleticism. And honestly, that just comes from the transfer portal. That's really what it comes down from. So um, Indiana wants to compete in this new Big Ten. There's going to be four new teams in there, four really good programs. They got to land guys like a Tony Perkins or someone like that. They really got to land them. So um, they they got to do it. You touched on something I wanted to kind of address, I mean, the play style. You mentioned it changed a little bit. There were still some – I mean, Purdue, I guess with ED, was still very inside-oriented. Rutgers with Cliff Amorier and a couple other teams. But, yeah, for the most part, the Big Tens kind of seem to start playing more perimeter basketball, which is something the conference has, I guess, needed to do for a while. And it's something where it's like you look at Malik Renew on paper. He's a 6'8", 6'9", undersized center if he's playing center. But the truth is if there isn't really those true bigs anymore, Renew can play center. It's just about playing, staying out of foul trouble. And if you're able to put in Baco – Trey Galloway and a couple other shooters around Renew to create space, he could be very, very dangerous in the post. But with that also being said, it's important to note that uh, that team up north, uh, Purdue, they lose that, they're going to lose Zach Eady this year, but 
Oh, just wait. They have a seven foot two uh, redshirt freshman, Will Berg from Sweden, waiting. Uh, who's uh, from what I've uh, heard developing very nicely. So, if you thought Purdue uh, got was uh, no more giant center in the middle, you thought wrong. Yeah, yeah. Purdue's not going anywhere. Um, if anyone's going to want to match that, they're going to have to get better. That's all you yeah. can say with that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We got anything else to talk about, Drew? Or we pretty much wrap it up. I just want. I think that we should add one more thing. I just one more thing before we wrap up. Uh, yeah, Dusty made a Michigan. Oh yeah, um, pretty big. You know, <laughs> it seemed like he was going to be a lock for Louisville for a few days yeah. there. But uh, good job from Michigan. That's a really good hire. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of guy that they needed. You know, the culture problem was kind of getting out of hand. Um, and me personally, I was kind of a big Juan Mor- uh, Juan Morgan Juan Howard guy. Um, I, I kind of liked the way he coached, and um, I always thought he said really, really good things about Indiana. Very, very respectful guy. But you know, there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that just kept coming out. And um, obviously, yeah. we've seen him, you know, attack coaches and things like that, and um, got really ugly there in Ann Arbor. But um, for what I've read, it sounds like John Beeline, um, all those guys, the AD, they all got together and kind of said, you know, Dusty May needs to be the guy, um, and they got the deal done. So that's big. Here's the thing, Indiana fans, Dusty May is going to recruit the state like no other, um, and it's a pretty good sell because Michigan's not that far from Indiana. So mm-hmm. Mike Woodson, Matt Painter especially, Nick Shrew- or Micah Shrewsbury, um, you, you just better be aware because Michigan's about to get some Indiana kids. So yeah. Dusty May is going to – I think he's going to do a good job there um, and really turn that program around. Yeah, a lot of people thought Dusty May was the the guy in waiting for the Indiana job just with his connections with, I guess, the program as a manager. Really good hire from Michigan. You mentioned some of the stuff behind the scenes with Juwan Howard. Uh, Blue by 90, the Michigan Full Ride Network affiliate, they had a really good uh, piece about that. I'm blanking on the title, but I'm sure if you go on their website, you can find it with ease and kind of learn a little more about uh, everything that was going on behind the scenes because it was not good and them being bad on the court only made it easier for them to fire Juwan Howard. Also, love Juwan Morgan, too. Uh, we only <laughs> on the Celtics for one year, but Celtics legend and Hoosier legend. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Juwan Morgan. Juwan Morgan actually might be my favorite uh, favorite Indiana player that never really gets all his flowers. So mm-hmm. he was a tough, tough player. So I'm glad we could throw his name out here a little bit. Yeah, and then I guess before we wrap up, I do want to say I want to add one thing about IU football. I was at the presser today. I've been doing a little bit of stuff for the practice, spring practices. My goodness, Kurt Signetti is a quote machine. I don't know if you saw the quote he had today. Uh, Mason Williams of uh, Rivals asked him pretty much how much 11-on-11 11 11 versus like full contact stuff he wants to do in the spring. And Signetti responds, word for word, we're going to bang. It's a contact sport. <laughs> Just He's great, man. I mean, yeah, obviously you're going to have to wait till he's on the field, but it just feels like a completely new, like just completely different full 180 from the previous era of IU football. I mean, he's a quote machine. I mean, it, from the first press conference, Google me, I win. You know, it's yep. – but there's a lot to be excited about the program. Really, I mean, it's a cool atmosphere, I guess. It's weird. Like, I remember in the fall covering, um, like, some of the practices for Indiana football. It was kind of like, uh, this is uh, could be rough. Now it's kind of like you got some something to be excited about for Indiana football, which is uh, cool to have in the program right now. Yeah, a lot, a lot of confidence in that uh, in that program right now. A lot of confidence. Everything he says, he's confident in everything. But obviously, like you said, you got to see what he does on the floor or on the field. Um, we'll get a good look at that when the the spring um, what, what the spring practice game is probably uh, spring scrimmage is coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, I think. It's Thursday of little five weeks. So I want to say it is what probably two weeks from now. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see a little bit about that, but it seems like everything's going well right now. The spring practices are going great. Um, so now he's saying some good stuff. So uh, we'll see about it. But um, before we officially wrap up, speaking of the summer and everything going forward, so um, we've got a few things in the works for this podcast. We're going to be a lot more active. I know at times uh, this season um, we weren't as active. You know, every other week, every two weeks or so. But if we're going to be honest with you. Wasn't a whole lot to talk about from week to week or whatever with this Indiana basketball team. So um, it was pretty much the same things over and over again, and you just kind of get burned out with it. But 
for this summer, there's going to be a lot of things. We're going to experiment with some series and things like that. Um, I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a player um, recap series moving forward and just kind of have about five episodes of those. Um, look at every single player from this past year's Indiana team, kind of recap their season moving forward, what they could do um, as well. Plus, you know, we really want to start having some guests. I, I thought we did a really good job with Ant Wright. Um, hopefully we can have him back soon. That'd be great. I yeah. think once the portal stuff kind of uh, – um, settles in or whatever, and Indiana gets more of a finalized roster. He'd be a guy that I think we could have back as well. But yeah. uh, hopefully Ant would be down to do that again. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of recruiting stuff. Um, this is kind of where I uh, kind of where I excel at a little bit. This is kind of my uh, my next few months yeah. or is strictly AAU. So we'll have a lot of recruiting information as well like that. Alex here, you know, he's, he's in Indiana. So um, we're going to be going out and stuff. Drew might even come in, you know, if he's yeah. going to stick around. So – um, we'll see about that. You know, it's going to be hot for Indiana this year when it comes to recruiting, especially the 2025 class, a lot of names in there, a lot of in-state names that they need. So, um, it's going to be a fun summer. We're going to have a lot to talk about, um, a lot of recruiting stuff. So, you know, make sure you're checking out who's Um, that's going to be your number one source when it comes to recruiting information, because we're just pumping things out left and right. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a fun summer. I think I'm excited yeah. to see what this podcast can do. We're going to grow it some more so you just kind of hit that subscribe button um on spotify youtube um and just follow along with the website who's real .com, i think is the hottest uh indiana beat website right now i think we're pumping out so much content right now and um we're just really kicking butt with it so follow along with us um we'll have a lot of information and then we'll start on that series the next time um and then we'll see kind of where it takes us yeah, one year too. Just hit the one year anniversary of Hoosier Illustrated too, so that was uh, yeah. really exciting. Also, wanna yeah, I mean a lot to be excited about. I mean, you mentioned that we're just pumping out stuff. I also want to give a we didn't really talk about them, but shout out to the women's basketball teams. Absolutely, third Sweet Sixteen in four years. I was uh, lucky enough to be boots on the ground for the first two rounds of the tournament. I won't be in Albany unfortunately when they take on South Carolina, five p.m. ESPN on Friday, but this, that team, there's so much fun to watch. They're so easy to root for too. I mean, if, if you read the story I wrote, you know, you, you saw, they play for each other. They love each other. Sydney Parrish said it word for word. They love each other. They love coach Moore and they love Indiana. Mackenzie Holmes said she loves assembly hall is her favorite place on earth. They love Hoosier nation and it's just makes them such an easy team to root for. So sure we'll have something uh for friday on that game or but yeah as always there's a lot to be uh excited about and who's your nation a lot to look forward to on the website and as always for all things iu athletics fall indiana underscore frn on twitter facebook and check out the who's your illustrated.com website and make sure to subscribe on both youtube and spotify who's your illustrated is also partnered with tom brady's company autograph to streamline our coverage so you can do what you do best all IU sports. Use code Indiana FR to get started today. As always, thank you for tuning in to the Talking About the Hoosiers podcast. We'll be back.